I for uh, 8 p.m. January 12, 2015, I please ask you to stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I want to wish each and every one of you a happy new year, happy and healthy uh, 2015. Uh, councilors, at this time, nominations are now open. City Council President for the year 2015. President, Councilor. I'd like to nominate Ward 3 Council. Second. Motion made properly seconded for Councilor Dennis Neri. I entertain a motion to close. Make a motion to close nomination. Second. Second. Motion made properly seconded to close nomination. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed. Motion carries. Uh, roll call vote now relative to the nomination for City Council President of the Year 2015, Dennis Neri, Ward 3. City Council. Azak. Councilor Neri. Cruz. Councilor Ian Erie. Annapolis. Councilor Ian Erie. Dubois. Councilor Dennis Ian Erie. Ian Erie. Me. Come on, Ian. I have to think about this. Ian Erie. Rodriguez. Councilor Ian Erie. Studinsky. You got that one right. Dennis Ian Erie. Sullivan. Councilor Dennis Ian Erie. Nine for Councilor Dennis Ian Erie. Councilor Dennis Ian Erie is president of the year 2015. <laughs> President-elect, use this you. wisely, Council. I know you will. <laughs> it is often, too. Right? Absolutely. You thank you. Thank you. Thank you was, uh, to all of you that are here this evening. I appreciate it. And to my colleagues, I, I appreciate the support. But before, we, um, before I go on with a few of my own words, I do have something for our outgoing Council President, Council Sullivan. On behalf of the City Council, on behalf of myself as the Council President, we want to thank you for a, a job well done in this past year, a uh, difficult year, new year for a lot of people, uh, but you, you did a very, very fine job. You handled the gavel well, and you kept everything in control, and we want to wish you the very best and continue working with you for this coming year. Thank so you, best Council. wishes, Council. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I, just, I just want to thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank each and every one of you who voted for me last year. It was really a, a pleasure and an honor to serve as your president for 2014. I think we did some great things collectively as a legislative body here as a city council. And I know you are our uh, great hands with our Ward 3 city council, President-elect Dennis Ianeri. He serves this council admirably every single day. And he was president in 2007, did an excellent job, and he will continue to do that. So I wish you all the best, Dennis. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you again, everybody. Thank you. President. Thank you. Uh, yes, Councilor. President, I'd like to be um, on record and register for the vote, please. Is he, uh, he wants to be on record as, as voting uh, for me, correct? That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> so he wants to be placed <laughs> in. It came in. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay. okay. Just, um, I do want to uh, take just a couple of minutes to uh, say a couple of words, and, and, I'm, and I promise I'm going to be brief because the agenda is brief, but I, um, I do want to move us along. So, Councilors, um, I, I do want to take time again to thank you for electing me to serve as your council president for the year 2015. I'm honored to serve in this position. I look forward to a continued working relationship with all of you. And my commitment to you as your council president will be to keep all lines of communication open. From the mayor's office to me, back to you, and as someone who has worked in the business field for the most of my entire work life, I think to me the greatest lifeline of success is communications. And may I add that that does not mean that I, or the mayor, or you, or the mayor, or all of us will all be on the same agenda, but I think that we all have to have a little stronger line of communications. And I do want to indicate that I've already had a meeting with the mayor in regards to this, and I know that he's going to try to work in, in making sure that that line of communication is much open wider than what it was over this past year. But I do want to take time to thank our council president, outgoing council president, Sullivan for opening lines of communication the way that he did this year by having joint meetings. I think at that point in time, we had never held any type of joint meetings with the mayor, city council, school committee members, other elected officials, other department heads, school department heads, superintendent of the schools, etc. cetera. And I, and I think they were very fruitful meetings. I've already had discussion with the mayor that we do want to have a joint meeting or two in the course of this year. That we're going to discuss when that time will be, sometime probably in spring, and, and maybe even into the early summer. But we will let you know on that. But I think it's very important that we do have a joint meeting. But I also want to stress, and I can't tell 
the ward counsels what to do, but I think I, I do ask that everybody try to have a ward meeting because I think that's most important as well. I know I hold them, I know some other councils do, and I know other councils have had them, but I think I'd like to just stress that, that I think that's another way of having lines of communication open, especially right within your own neighborhood and right within the people of the city of Brockton, and because it attracts other people from, from around the, the city as well. As you know, this is going to be a very important year for us. It's our election, re-election year, whatever you want to classify it. And there's no doubt in my mind that we'll be faced with some challenges, and you know what some of those challenges are going to be. And especially as we prepare for fiscal year 2016, at this point in time, I don't think anyone is too sure what the financial landscape is going to be like as we prepare, prepare for the next fiscal year. The economy is turning. It is turning. And it is going in a positive direction. When I was here in 2007, we had a difficult time then. If you listen to the article that was written on me just a few weeks ago, it made it look like my presidency when I was done, everything bottomed out. Well, it did bottom out. Everything did bottom out throughout the whole country in some such way. But I think we see some new things happening. We see some great projects in the city that, that are now going on. And we see new businesses and small businesses coming in. But at the same time that the economy is spinning, I don't think our revenues are keeping up with the pace that the economy is. And that's making it tough, and that's what's going to make a very, very tough uh, budget process. And keep in mind, Council, you have some employee contracts that are going into their second and third year. They're going to be very big payouts, and we're going to have to be dealing with that situation as well. And as you know, our new governor already has about $700 million he has to plug for a deficit. And I wish our new colleague from Ward 6, the state representative, well as she prepares <laughs> and works with that budget. So it's, it's not going to be an easy job. However, I think as councilors, at the end of every meeting, we try to do what we think is the best, and that's in the best interest of the city, best interest of the people, and, and continue to offer them an adequate level of services. Councilors, there's only just a, a rule or two that I, I would ask, and I, I asked it back when I was council president then, and I thought it worked is I just think that all orders and resolves should be filed in the clerk's office on a timely fashion, which would be noontime by, uh, on the Tuesday prior to our council meeting. And I, and I would hope that that would cut down on what we have as late files. Uh, and if we have to have a late file, I don't want to know about it 10 minutes before I, I come in to a meeting or 20 minutes when, while I'm into the meeting. I'd rather know that the clerk knew about it three or four hours prior to our, our meeting night. And I, and I think that will help us alleviate you know, some of the situations that we have with late files and the public would be well aware of what we are filing. Um, and as, as always, councilors, I'll never deny any council the right to speak on, uh, on, or have a personal moment of privilege. However, I would ask that your remarks be of, you know, matters of concerning what is transpiring here and pertaining to our, our city. So just a few things that I want to want to set forth. Councilors, again, I thank you for this great honor. And I want to wish all of you and everybody that's here this evening, um, I want to wish you all and the residents of the city of Brockton a happy, healthy, prosperous new year. And I think um, we're going to have a great year, filled with challenges, but it's going to be a good year. So thank you all, and, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. And just before, I, just before we do begin with the... Uh, with the agenda, I do want to make mention my, my sister is in the audience this evening, Cheryl Zarella Burke, so I appreciate her, her coming, and she's uh, brought a little cheering squad with her. Her good friends Sally and Lisa here, they're, they're here to cheer on, and uh, I appreciate, as always, my, my sister's, uh, uh, you know, my, my closest of all, and, and it's only her and I, and, uh, you know, we uh, spend a lot of time together, and, and of course, next week she's going to be celebrating her birthday on January 19th, so. Uh, she was born in 1950, so you can do the math. <laughs> you look in great. any case, <laughs> thank you, mistake. sister, for being here. I appreciate it very, very much. Mr. Clerk, uh, are you ready to begin? I'm ready. Okay. The petition of BCAP LLC for an underground storage license located at 1813 and 1829 Main Street in City Clerk's Office, November 14th. 2014. Hearing is signed for January 12, 2015. The fire department has some stipulations. Otherwise, all paperwork is on file. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anybody here in favor, please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Thank President you. and other counselors. For the record, my name is John Smolak of the firm of uh, Smolak and Vaughn of North Andover, uh, attorney for the applicant uh, licensee. Good evening. Good evening. 
And uh, we're here this evening to request a license for a redevelopment of a uh, new gas station and convenience store that will eventually become a Cumberland Farms uh, property. Uh, Cumberland Farms would be investing about $3 million into, the, into this particular site, similar to a, a site that was developed last year uh, in a similar <coughs> amount at uh, Crescent Street. And, and Cumberland Farms is really looking forward and is excited about the process or prospect of getting that redeveloped. That's very good. Great. Uh, is there anybody else uh, here? here in favor of, I'd ask them to come forward at the same time as stipulate their name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, Councilor Stadinsky on that. Mr. Councilor Smollett Small, Small, called me, contacted the neighbors around there, and everybody was very happy with uh, what's going to occur, and the wide council and myself was very happy with it. And I really appreciate it. I want to thank you and public for that. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here in opposition to this petition? I ask that you please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Anybody here in opposition? Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. And I declare the, uh, the hearing closed. Hand vote. Okay. Yeah. Question is on granting the license. We'll go by a hand vote. All in favor? Oppose? License been granted. Thank you very much. And good luck, because I work right down by there, so I appreciate what you're, you're going to be doing to the corner down there. Thank you. Thank you. Petition of Brockton Tire Incorporated for motor vehicle repair mechanical license located at 311 North Montello Street in City Clerk's Office, July 24th, 2014. Hearing is signed for January 12th, 2015. All necessary paperwork is on file and the fire department has no objections. Time have to arrive, I declare the hearing open. If there's anybody here, please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. How you doing, my name is Anthony Rose. This is my wife, Lauren Rose. We um had purchased this business from Eddie A. Warren. He was the existing owner. Uh, we're basically trying to just transfer everything. It was an existing business, and we're just, you know, f taking over from where he left off. Um, there isn't going to be any changes or anything. We're just continuing doing the uh, used tire business. Mr. Pr okay, very good. Council Dubois. Um, I wish I had um, if, that you had contacted me about it. Um, can you tell me what your hours of operation are going to be? Yep. I did leave a message at your office. Never, I never got it. Oh, yeah. Um, our hours are operation on Monday through Saturday, and we're open 8, eight to, to six, 6 on Monday through Friday, and then Saturday is 8 to 3. Say that again? Monday through Friday is 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and then Saturday would be 8 a.m. to 3. And what, what do you plan on doing there? We just, it's a used tire business. We just, you know, change tires. That's all. Do you plan on storing any vehicles outside overnight? No. Okay, we're going to um, make that a stipulation in the permit, if that's okay, since you're not going to do it anyways, that no vehicles are to be stored outside overnight. Yep. Um, now, the thing, I don't own the property. I only bought the business. That's, it's associated so. to your license. Okay. okay, so now there's another, like, business in the back that they ship, um, like contain is uh, exporting or whatever they I do. I think that you would just be responsible for yourself. So it's if you find if you find a lot. car on that lot and you say, mm -hmm. I can just say it's not mine and that's all it needs. Yeah. To be done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Easy enough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll write that up. Okay, Council. Is there anyone else here that's uh, in favor of the petition? Please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, I'm, gonna, I'm going to declare that part of the hearing closed. Is there anybody here in opposition to this petition? Please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Anyone in opposition? Seeing none, I declare the, uh, the hearing uh, closed at this time. Yeah. Council Dubois, what was your stipulation? Um, a stipulation that there'll be no outside storage of vehicles or motor vehicles parts. That's a motion, correct? Yes. Second. Make a motion. Second. Motion been made and second to accept the stipulation. Just on the stipulation, all in favor? Opposed? Now it goes to granting as stipulated um, by a hand vote. All in favor? Opposed? Petitions granted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Yep. Okay. Communication relative to the open meeting law complaint. Mr. President. Ms. Uh, Attorney Gil Gilday. Yes. Uh, members of the council, the open meeting law sets forth a process to be followed in addressing complaints of violations of the open meeting law. A complaint relative to a violation of the open meeting law was received in the clerk's office on December 22, 2014. A copy of that complaint has been provided to each counselor. This is the first meeting of the council since that time. 
What the law states is that within 14 business days of the date on which the complaint was filed, the City Council must review the complaint and respond to the complainant. In addition, the Council must send a copy of the complaint and its response to the Attorney General's office. The City Clerk and the Council President had asked that I review the open meeting law claimed complaint and help with preparing a draft uh, response. I am providing each of you with a copy of the proposed response and I would ask if each of you could take a moment to read it and then I will continue on. Everybody set? So prior to any counselor asking any questions or making any comments, I would ask you to keep in mind a couple things. First of all, a public body is not required to disclose the minutes or materials used in an executive session when the disclosure of those records would defeat the lawful purpose of the executive session. Even if disclosure would no longer defeat that purpose of the executive session, minutes and other materials and records from the executive session <coughs> still not need to be disclosed if the attorney-client privilege exists. I would suggest to the council that both of those situations exist, and I would recommend that you not disclose publicly what was discussed in executive session during any discussion you may have on this complaint. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And it, I would just point out, in the event that the council decides that it would like me to move forward with providing a draft response to the complainant, a motion of the council would be required. Any questions, councilors, for the attorney in regards to this matter? 
Councilor Cruz. In that case, I would make a motion that the council authorize the legislative council to respond to the complaint to express that the city council is not required to disclose the minutes of an executive session, where the disclosure of these records may defeat the lawful purposes of the executive session or where the attorney-client privilege exists, and to express concern about the possible breach of duty of confidentiality in executive session. Second. Motions were made and seconded by a roll call vote. Mr. Chairman, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. <laughs> yes. Cruz. Yes. Tanapoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monahan. Yes. <clears throat> Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Motion passes. Next item, uh, <coughs> Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Attorney Gilday. We have an audience amended Chapter 11 of the revised audiences of the City of Brockton. We are ordained by the City Council for the City of Brockton as follows. <laughs> Chapter 11, Section 11 162, and Council October 14, 2014, referred to the Committee on Ordinance, and Council October 27, passed with third reading by hand vote, and Council November 10, 2014, Council Dubois motion to refer back to Ordinance Committee, properly seconded. Motion carried by a roll call vote, yeas and nays, nine members present, five voted in the affirmative. Councilor Cruz, Monahan, Rodriguez, and Stadinsky voted in the negative. Councilor Dinopoli and Ianeri absent. The recommendation is favorable. The question is an adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, Mr. President? Councilor Dubois. May, may I just ask um, what, the, what the vote was again? I missed it. I apologize. The vote was favorable. What else did you want? Wasn't there a roll call vote? I believe it was. Yes, it was. The roll call vote was to four, five yeas and uh, four nays. Who voted yay? Who voted f against? Yeah. For it. For uh, Councillor Azak, Councillor Barnes, Councillor Dubois, and Councillor Stewart, and Councillor Sullivan. Thank you so much. Roll call vote, Mr. Mr. Clerk. He's here. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Tanapoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. In order that the DPW is authorized to issue one single family home sewer connection to the Barrows Realty Group, LLC, 1035 Layton Street, Brockton, for the property located at Parcel ID 180-23, Plot 14. Referred to finance. Lord of the DPW Commission is authorized to issue one single family hold sewer connection to Tory and Associates Real Estates, affordable properties, uh, 41 Arlington Street, Brockton, for the property located at 15 Intervale Street, Brockton. Referred to finance. An order of rules Councilor of Councilor DiNapoli. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Items 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 are routine items we do every year, and we'd like to move this, I believe, tonight under suspension of the rules. And take, them, President. And take them collectively. And Collect and collectively, yes, please. Yep. The motion's been made and second to take items 8 through 12 collectively, <coughs> and uh, we'll suspend the rules and act on them this evening. It's routine business. Mr. Clerk. Rules and regulations governing motor vehicles for hire under Chapter 159A for the carrying of passengers that the Board of Assessors be, and they are hereby authorized and directed to act as agents of the City Council in the matter of apportionments and betterments. Clerk to give notice of hearings before Council. Regulations governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the City of Brockton. And park brokers <coughs> are to deliver a list of purchased pawned articles to the Chief of Police. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Azaf. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stavinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. 11 in the affirmative. And that has been adopted. The executive session, Brockton Power Company, LLC. Brockton okay. Power, LLC. Can I? 
I don't want to, I just wanted to do a couple of things before we went into that, if okay. we could. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Clerk, if I, if I might. Just a couple of things I just want to mention before we, we take that and, and then we move forward into the executive session. I just want to remind everybody that next Monday is a holiday, so our finance meeting will be held on Tuesday, January the 20th at 7 p.m. right here in the council chambers. And our following uh, council meeting, next council meeting, will be Monday, January 26th at 8 p.m. here uh, in the chambers. I just also want to... Uh, remind you, you all received an invitation of correspondence that Mayor Carpenter's State of the City Address will be held this Thursday evening, January 15, 2015, 6 p.m. at the Brockton War Memorial Building. There are reserved seats for city councilors, school committee members, and other elected officials. Those that wish to attend, again, it's this uh, coming Thursday, January 15th at 6 p.m. at the Brockton War Memorial um, Building. I also yes. have here, I have the list of um, Committees, which I'll just read quickly, and then I'll hand them out to you um, when we go into uh, executive session. Finance Committee, all members of the City Council. Accounts Committee, uh, Thomas Monahan, Chair. Shana Barnes, Michelle Dubois, Moises Rodriguez, and Jazz Stewart. Beautification Committee is Shirley Azak. Community Schools, Shana Barnes. Ordinance Committee, Robert Sullivan, Chair. Timothy Cruz, Dennis Denapoli, Thomas Monahan, Paul Studinsky. Public Safety, Timothy Cruz, Chair. Shirley Azak, Shana Barnes. Dennis Denapoli, Jay Stewart. Real Estate Committee, Paul Stadinsky, Chair. Michelle Dubois, Thomas Monahan, Moises Rodriguez, and Robert Sullivan. Traffic Committee, Shirley Azak and Moises Rodriguez, and I will hand them out to you um, when we go into um, uh, our session in, in there. Mr. President, Councilor may I have a moment of personal privilege? Yes, you may. Thank you. I just want to announce to my fellow councilors and those at home that um, January 17th is the 28th annual Martin Luther King Day Breakfast at the Shaw Center. It's from 9 a.m. to noon. Tickets are $35 for adults and $15 for children. I hope that you'll all be able to make it. It's on January 17th. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Anybody else? Councilor? Mr. President, I just want to let you know, now that you've done the committee's uh, Tuesday evening prior to the finance, I'm going to have a public safety at 645. There's one agenda item that needs to be taken care of. Okay, very good. So anybody that's on that just got appointed to it. Okay. Be here a few minutes early. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any other, anything else from personal privilege? Seeing none? Uh, yes, Council actually. Councilor Bonds? Yes, um, also, uh, as this is the, oh, excuse me. We've been gone too long, I forgot the rules. Um, <laughs> as this is the, uh, Time to observe Reverend uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. Also, Temple Black Bermuda will be having a luncheon on uh, Sunday, the 18th at uh, 115. And um, I actually am the, the keynote speaker this year, so I'm really excited about that. And inviting all Brockton residents and all interested parties, please come down to Temple Black Bermuda, uh, 115 on Sunday. Thank, thank you. you. Anything else? Mr. Yeah. Clerk, I'm going to go back to. Thank you. Item 13, Executive Session, Brockton Power Company, LLC, Brockton Power, LLC, versus City of Brockton, Brockton City Council, et al., United States District Court for the District of Massachusetts, Civil Action Number 112-CV-1147. Councilor Cruz. Mr. President, I hereby move to go into Executive Session to discuss strategy with respect to the pending litigation with Brockton Power as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded that we go into executive session by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. What do I read the whole thing? I say, read this again to him. I don't have a detrimental. I state that. It I state that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. The roll call has been taken, and we are now going into executive session. That closes the public part of the meeting. We will not be returning to the public this evening. This part of the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>